Congressman Mark Pocan, ready for your calls. Uh, Judy in Bombay Beach, California. You are on the air with Representative Pocan. Good morning and happy to the New Year's to you both. I appreciate you both so much. Thank you. And this is really a comment, not a question, and I have two of them. One of them is, you know, Medicare Advantage. I've heard you both talk about this a lot, and I've never heard anybody explain. My friend, <coughs> excuse me, who was on Medicare and had a supplemental, and by the time her supplemental kept going up, and so by nine years in, her supplemental was $300 a month, and she couldn't get a cheaper one. <coughs> so her only option was to sign up for Medicare Advantage. It's the only way she can could afford it so i just thought that was something i've never yeah. heard anybody say on the show before yeah. yeah it's it's horrible so and i don't know what can be done about that other than just keep rooting for medicare for all and the other thing is that um when so i had health insurance under my husband uh, when he retired from the government and then he decided to leave me after you know we were on that for uh, like five years, six years. So when I had to sign up for Medicare, I got penalized for the f six years that I was not on Medicare because they don't see divorce as a critical life change like they do death or something like that. So I think that needs to get in <laughs> yeah. somewhere in the Medicare thing because you, it's not, you know, you don't, it, it, unbeknownst to me or anyway, you know, anyway, you kind of suffer the, the consequences of right. uh, someone deciding they wanted to walk away. So those are just the two things about Medicare I wanted to say this morning. Well, thank you, Judy. You said them very well. Let's hear, let's, let's see what Congressman uh, Pocan has to say about it all. Thank you. Yeah, Judy, I think you're going to hear a lot about Medicare Advantage um, this year because now we have a group of members working actively on this as well as a group of advocates on the outside working together actively on this. And the two issues you raise um, are, are excellent issues. One, uh, part of the problem is uh, that people have to do a Medigap uh, supplemental policy on Medicare. And that's one of the things that often you'll be told you don't need to do on Medicare Advantage. The problem is there's all the other problems with Medicare Advantage where you have to go in network. They can deny claims and they de deny millions a year of which when people wind up going through the appeal process, 81% get overturned. So clearly they're just kind of automatically uh, rejecting things in order to uh, try to um, save money and that's costing people their lives. So, I mean, you can get cheaper care, but it's not gonna be as comprehensive. There is uh, one thing that if we got rid of the overpayments alone that happened to Medicare Advantage, which is 140 billion a year, you could pay for Medigap insurance for every single person in the country who's on Medicare. So that's one more reason why we have to talk about Medicare Advantage. And to your other point, I actually think you might have a bill idea out there. I was not aware. I know there's a penalty when you go back to Medicare. And again, uh, they, they the, the lobbyists did a good job when they got this bill passed to allow them to call themselves Medicare Advantage, period. But there should be, you're right, if someone has a divorce, uh, that is enough of a life-changing thing. There shouldn't be a penalty then to be able to go on Medicare. And uh, I'm going to take that back and see if there's something we might be able to do about that. That's great. Congressman, do you think that if it was widely known in the United States that in 1966, when Robert Ball was writing the Medicare legislation, um, the original Medicare proposal was 100% coverage, you know, for people over 65, and the Southern racist senators when it came to Lyndon Johnson and said, uh, and, and Robert Ball, and said, uh, we will oppose this unless you can put something in there that will present a significant barrier to poor black people showing up in our all white hospitals and all white doctor's offices. Because Medicare specifically forbade or forbids uh, discrimination, racial discrimination. Uh, as did you know the, the Civil Rights Act and, and the, uh, before it. You know there was two years before that. So the only reason there's that 20% hole in Medicare is because that's what the Southern senators wanted on the assumption that poor black people wouldn't be able to come up with the 20%, so they wouldn't bother to come into the doctor's office or the hospital. I mean that's literally the only reason that that's in Medicare. Um, do you think that if people generally knew that, that there might be a movement to try to strip that out and just basically do away with Medigap? In a normal Congress, yes. This is <laughs> a normal Congress, right? Um, but, you know, what you say makes perfect sense. And if we were able to express that and figure it out, 
We have another way we're working on. We our, our consortium is actually really trying to focus on this Medigap. I mean, as much as we also want to expand Medicare to dental, vision, and hearing, which should be covered as well because they're all medical conditions. This Medigap is the one I think that um, we've got a couple ideas that we're working on right now and uh, we are trying to address. But this Congress, I mean, with a two seat now majority instead of a five seat majority, not much is going to get done. Yeah, I totally get it.